Hey everybody, Max Kevin here. It's a little cute podcast. It's not too long. I hope you guys have a good, good morning today. You know, I just had a good morning today. I just woke up. You know, I went for a little walk with Zoro. You know, just a little morning walk. You know, of course it was really cold last night. It was like minus two, and everyone's posting on the social media like, "Oh my God, it's so cold. Oh, what is this? What, what is going on right now? Why is it so cold? I mean, it's the middle of winter, but why is it so cold? I don't understand. I mean, it's." It's January. It's uh, it's so uh, it's super. Why is it so cold? Right? I can't believe it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people always make the joke, you know, in uh, in uh, in Japan, you know, around the winter time, it becomes the season to say samuine, which means it's cold, isn't it? You know, and then around uh, summertime, you know, everyone's like atsuine, which means it's hot, isn't it? You know, so uh, right now we're uh, we're in it's cold, isn't it? Season, you know. Of course, I was walking around with Zora, you know. We're walking around the neighborhood, you know, of course, every time uh, we walk past someone with another dog, you know, like they see me, I see them, we make eye contact, you know, we're getting closer and we're like, all right, what are we going to do here? We're going to, are we just going to ignore each other? We're going to let the dog sniff each other's butts. What are we going to do here? You know, so every time I, uh, you know, I kind of see what they're doing, you know, well, we we often uh, let the dogs get near each other. I don't know. I feel like in America, people just like w- ignore each other on the sidewalk there. They don't. They don't really, like, interact, you know, let the dogs mingle or whatever. But over here in Japan, it's like, oh, let, let's let them, let's let them sniff each other's butts. They, they should, they need to do that so they can become friends with the other dogs. They need to sniff each other's butts and, and have a, have a good, make, be good neighbors, you know. So I, I'm walking down the hill there and I see this lady walking up there with her dog there. I'm like, all right, what's going on here, you know. So, uh, you know, and she, like, slowly slowly walks towards me, you know, and then the dogs start sniffing each other, you know, and every, every time this happens, like, the person, you know, I'll say, like, I'll say, like, can you you know, like, hello, you know, and they, they won't say anything, they'll just, we'll both just stand there silently, as our dogs are sniffing each other's butts, you know, and there's no, like, oh, do you live around here, oh, hi, how are you, and nothing, they're just saying, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a foreigner, I guess, I don't know, they don't, they don't know if I can speak Japanese, or they're too afraid to speak English, but it's like, well, well this, is, this is awkward, man, this is fucking awkward, you know, like, you ever have, like, awkward silence, you know, where you're standing next to someone, you know? But it's it's just like that, except while while you're standing next to someone silently, your two dogs are sniffing each other's butts, you know? And we're both just, like, looking at the dogs, so we don't want to make eye contact with each other. It's like, all right, well, how how long are we going to let this go on here, you know? When's the, when's going to be the key moment to walk away? You know, it's, uh... We've been standing here, we've been standing here for a good, though, 20, 30 seconds, you know, while saying absolutely nothing. Kind of want to... Keep walking here, you know, so my dog can take a dump on the street somewhere. Oh, anyway, yeah, so uh, we eventually, uh, we eventually parted ways, you know. I said, uh, you know, I said goodbye, the lady said nothing, I don't know, I don't know what her deal was. I don't know what her deal was, it's kind of weird. These Japanese people are all weird, huh? This is a weird country. Um, what else is going on here? Yeah, I, uh... Did a little comedy last night, you know, it was pretty good, you know, I didn't really, I was kind of in a bad mood yesterday, you know, as usual, uh, but, uh, I always feel better, I always feel better after doing, you know, I never actually want to do it, like, I'm always sitting in my house, and I'm just like, oh, God, I don't want to go, I don't want to, I don't want to go out of, there's no jokes, I don't even want to say any of these jokes, all these jokes are fucking dumb, oh, God, I'm a terrible comedian, these jokes are fucking terrible, I can't, I can't believe I would even think these are funny, these are just dumb as fucking jokes, and, you know, then I finally get there, you know, my mood changes a little bit, you know, I get a little, little, little better mood, you know, like, all right, well, we get, you know, all right, let's tell some, you know, you get some laughs, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, I feel good, you know, you always feel good, you always feel good after working out, you always feel good after telling jokes, of course, unless you bomb, you know, and then you feel worse, which, uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's a terrible feeling, you know, I guess if, if we do, like, a gym equivalent, it'd be like going to the gym and, like, you can't lift any of the weights. Like, you go, you're trying to lift the five-pound weight, you can't even lift it. You're like, oh, God, I'm so weak. Can't even lift the five-pound weight. Oh, God. And then, like, as you're trying to lift it, everyone just laughs at you. And they're like, what are you doing here? What are you even doing trying to lift that five-pound weight, you fucking loser? You know, that's kind of what, that's kind of what bombing feels like, so. It doesn't make you, doesn't make you feel good. That's the thing with comedy, you know. Sometimes it makes you feel great, but sometimes it makes you feel like shit. Um, anyway, there's a couple, uh, there's a couple new comedians, there's some funny, some funny new comedians there, you know, uh, guess that's the end of that story, uh, of course we got the, uh, we have the UFC fights, you know, 
Well, this UFC fights, you know, okay, I ended up uh, losing $5 total, you know. I bet 45 and I won 40 so I lost $5 total. Mainly because mainly my two big bets, 10 bucks on Paul Craig. Paul Craig what, gets knocked out in the front row. Paul Craig, what are you doing, man? Okay, Paul Craig knocked out Jamal Hill, who won the belt, you know. And then he just gets knocked out in the first round. He looks fucking terrible. Like, he catches this kick and just holds on to it. And he's like, it's, it's like, what are you doing, dude? So let go of the guy's leg. Like, he's holding on to the leg. He's getting punched in the face. It's like, hey, maybe let go of the leg. You know, I'm screaming at the TV screen. Let go of the leg. What are you doing? My 10 bucks is out of the line. Why are you holding on to his leg? What? That's, oh, God. And then he just gets knocked down. It's like, oh, okay, dude. All right, bro. What are you, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You have a win over the champion. And you just look so, oh, God. Oh, terrible. You know? Anyway, congratulations, Johnny Walker. You know, maybe he's uh, maybe he's, maybe he's an up and coming contender again. You know, but his last two his last two knockouts when he got knocked out by Jamal Hill and uh, that other dude looked pretty bad. He might he might not have a chin. You know, who knows? Paul Craig didn't even touch him, so uh, I mean, he might have might have been able to knock him out if he uh, tried punching instead of just holding onto his leg. Ah, fucking Paul Craig. Then of course uh, Jessica Andraj performed. I, guess just like everyone thought she would totally destroyed lauren murphy lauren murphy's corner definitely should have thrown in the towel there you know that third round there they're like we believe in you lauren we believe even though you just got your ass beat for two rounds straight you know and i think the final score is it was like 30 25 so like two of those rounds were 10 8 rounds probably all, all three of them should have been 10 8 rounds like god she's got her ass beat sucks to be her Sucks to be her. And of course, Gilbert Burns too. That uh, that one pretty much went as everyone expected. You know, Burns was dominated. He used used his jujitsu to submit Neil Magny. I don't think anyone anyone thought it was going to go any differently. Really, I mean, you don't think Neil Magny has the uh, takedown defense enough there? You know. Uh, what about the cross Figueredo? Figueredo, Brandon Moreno. I put five bucks in Moreno. Man, Moreno looks so much better. He looked great. He was dominating those three rounds, and then. And that one punch punched him in the eye there, you know. Figured it was like, oh, you poked my eye. But it was actually it was a punch, you know. But it totally destroyed his eye, man. Couldn't even open it. Fight got stopped. More fighters should do that. Just punch him in the eye. That's how you win, dude. It's an easy, easy strategy there, you know. Just punch dudes in the eye. Can't see. You win the belt. Yeah, even if, uh, even if uh, that eye, even if his eye was able to be open, it wasn't looking good for Figure He was getting dominated. He was getting dominated every round. Yeah, and of course the scorecards there. They gave they gave Figueroa round two, the judges, and then uh, you know the commentators like, what? What are they? What are they talking about? He got he got dominated that time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did. I don't understand. Some corruption, man. Brazilian corruption. And of course, of course, Glover Teixeira there. You know, I put ten bucks on him, but uh, oh man, he looked uh, he looked pretty bad there. He looked pretty bad, you know. I think it was just that war he had with Jerry. You know, he's an old man. He just looked really slow and. Uh, his striking was not looking... His striking looked a lot worse than it did against Jerry. I don't know if Jerry is just uh, worse than Jamal Hill. Or, you know, Jerry always has his hands down. Of course, Jamal Hill also kind of had his hands down a lot. But Jerry likes to uh, bait guys with his... Like, he'll throw his head out there and try to bait guys. I think that was kind of his downfall there. You know, Jamal Hill had uh, some hot defense. He had some hot D. So, uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Glover Sheriff. <laughs> oh, man, his face. Oh, God. He had somebody cuts on his face. His blood everywhere. His corner probably should have thrown in the towel too, but I guess they knew it was his uh, retirement fight there. And you know, Glover Teixeira, he always has that chance. You know, there's so many fights where like it looked like he was going to get knocked out, and then he somehow submits the guy. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, I guess they wanted to wanted to give him that chance there. But yeah, man, he just uh, he did not look good. He did not look good. Maybe it's maybe it's Jamal Hill. I mean, Jamal Hill. Yeah, his uh, his takedown defense looked pretty good. So we'll see. Uh, See what happens here, you know? I mean, there's not too many contenders. I mean, I guess there's like Jiri. There's a Russian guy, Rakic. There's, uh, you know, there's uh, Polish Power. Well, I guess there are a lot of contenders now that I think about it. But uh, I feel like in this division, skill-wise, there's no one who's like above and beyond the rest. You know, like if you go to like 145, you know, there's like Max Holloway and Volkanovski, and then there's everybody else. You know, those guys are both so much higher than everybody else, you know? If you go to some other, uh, well, yeah, some other divisions, I guess the light heavyweight's kind of a, it's not even. There's a lot of even fights, you know. There's no guys that are just leagues beyond the others. 
So uh, I think Jamal Hill, I wonder who he's going to find. Yeah, Prochats Jimmy Prochatska said he's going to come back in the summer. I wonder if Jamal might uh, defend one more time before Jiri Prochatska comes. Uh, God, you know what? You know what's funny about that? Glover Teixeira, like, after he lost, you know, the, the the stadium full of Brazilian people, they're so salty. They're so, they're so like, nationalistic, you know? They're, they're throwing shit at Brandon Moreno after he won the belt. And then Glover Teixeira, Glover Teixeira loses, and they all just leave the stadium, right? The guy's giving his retirement speech, you know? Like, he, he fought in the UFC for, like, 20 years. He's a fucking legend. Oldest guy to ever win the belt. He's probably, you know... I mean, in Brazil, like, how many guys... I mean, they got Anderson Silva, you know? They got uh, they got Jose Aldo, you know? And Glover Teixeira, those are probably the top three. Top three Brazilian Brazilian badasses. And they just, uh, they just abandoned him. They just left him all alone in the stadium there. He's giving his retirement speech. The stadium's completely empty. Everybody left. Because he lost. What a bunch of disrespectful rap scallions, man. Yeah, Brazilians, dude. Yeah, Glover Teixeira, you know, he like, he saw Brandon Moreno get, uh, get popcorn and drinks thrown at him, you know? So he's like, he's like telling the crowd what's left, all 10 of them that are left in the stadium. He's like, Jamal Hill, he's a, he's a champion, all right? So we're going to walk back with him, treat him with respect. But it's like, he's not talking to anyone because <laughs> the stadium's fucking empty. Uh, God, it was that was depressing. I felt really bad for Glover to share there, man. Just like his countrymen abandoned him there. What a bunch of little pussy bitches, you know. I guess that's why their economy is shit, you know, because they don't have any respect for the fighters. They don't have any respect for free market capitalism either. You know. Anyway, thanks for listening. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow.